And then I believe in issue two. Now I don't know if the issue two came out this week as well. I'm still lo looking around on that. But some issues that I liked was the Superman one where him and Lois are having a child. The question was really good. Titans with um had Donna, Starfire and um, Arsenal. And I really enjoyed Nightwing and um, Oracle. Because Oracle's back, and this now pre 52, I did not know if they got that together, but in this, they seem to have gotten together and they love each other and like married and all that, which is great. I always enjoyed their um, I always enjoyed that relationship. Then again, all of um, Dick's relationships were pretty cool, a bit crazy considering he was kind of with a princess, but there you go, and um. The question was another good one. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, there weren't really any bad ones. I can understand people having bad ones for the fact that it doesn't. It depends what you want. Since there are two issues, you can, the first issue isn't, isn't really going to go into um, character as much as you'd think. But when the second one might, you know, when you get the whole picture, it might all come together and you might understand it more, um, which you will. Actually, that's how it mostly goes. So for me, I can't make a full decision until I've read the second part, which is why I would say is see if you can read it online, at least one issue or both issues, and then if you like it, go out and buy it. That's what I've done. I've gone online and I've found it. There's hundreds of sites you can go on where you can just have scans of it or you can just read it. And then that's where I've made my decision. Some of them were good, but they weren't as good as some others. Flash was good. I liked Flash uh, with, his, um, with Iris and... His, his son and daughter, I think it was Irish and uh, Irish, Iris and I can't remember his son's name. And then there was uh, Batgirl, Batgirl, Stephanie Brown's Batgirl. That was really good. That was I. That was really really good. Uh, she just um, she doesn't know what she's doing. She's the she's been off from being Batgirl for a year, and now all of a sudden she's back. She's now Batgirl, and she's got to save her her um. Her town or her world? I can't. It's it's weird because a lot of the pre two ones you'd always have different people. So either I guess it's they get like in each town, yeah. So from what I understand is from each world they got Metropolis, pre fifty two, pre Flashpoint, pre I mean, yeah, pre fifty two, pre zero hour, pre Crisis and Infinite Earths, and I think in each one they've got a Gotham, a coastal city, um, coast city, and you know, so on and so forth, Star City, Star, Starling City, or Star City, and also, um, and so on. And then each one, they have the, the, the champions who have to fight to save their, um, their universe, which is cool. Um, I gotta say, even though it sounds like Secret Wars, it basically just sounds like, now th this, it, 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 it's weird. I feel like when DC and Marvel did this, with Secret Wars and Convergence, they just like, so what should we do? I don't know, let's take Secret Wars from Marvel, Crisis on Infinite Earths from DC and mash them together. And, oh, let's see, with the, the Marvel Universe we get Secret Wars, awesome. With DC Universe we get Convergence, E. Hey. I'm interested to see what happens. I think Convergence for DC is a zero hour type effect where it will change the universe a bit, but not a huge like Crisis on Infinite Earths. And I think with Secret Wars, Secret Wars is basically Crisis on Infinite Earths for Marvel, and that's good because the one thing I hated about Marvel was you can't really start anywhere. In DC, if you wanted to start, say, um, pre crisis 1985, issue ones, and that's it. That goes up to zero hour, and then after zero hour, you got the issue ones again, bam. But with, with Marvel, and if you want to go before Crisis on Infinite Earths, you got all them. But with Marvel, it's just start a Marvel, and then we got to Secret Wars, and that's it. But what we want to understand is in Secret Wars, a lot of that canon will be canon still. It's 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 very strange. Um, I was never good at following DC. I'm not DC. I'm Marvel mainly because of that issue of, hey, we got so much stories and all that. And some were great. I mean, Infinity Gold was amazing. Infinity War was alright. Um, I'm still reading the Necrotia, which is just Blackest Night in Marvel. 
which isn't bad. I like it when both Marvel and DC, you know, take things from each other and use it. They all copy off, they all copy off each other, but it makes for great stories. So in the end, who cares? Because when you think about it, everything is a copy of of, a, of another thing. You know, your favorite show or movie is most likely copied elements from other movies and other shows and so on and so forth. So in the end, everything's all a big giant copy mashing together of stuff. Yeah, but honestly. As a fan of Convergence, going back to Convergence, it's amazing. I'm loving it. It's 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 making me feel so giddy inside. I feel like a kid. Well, I don't feel like a kid again. I'm not that old, to be honest. I'm 21, but still, I don't like to be considered old by some standards. But it makes you feel like it makes you feel like you're back again. You know, you're uh, that when you're reading this universe that you grew up with, it doesn't end. Before, when I read Pre-52. I knew it was going to end because of Flashpoint. And I still like Flashpoint, don't get me wrong. Flashpoint was the last story I could play before being like, alright, the new 52 starts, damn. But now with Convergence, I may have, sure, after this I may have another 20, 30 issues that are considered part of that canon. But at the end of this, Convergence, there might be doors left open for me to go, hey, they might do some more pre-52 and they might do that and I'm hoping they do which is why I implore everyone who likes pre-52 to get as much pre-52 storage as you can the more of the money it makes the more the more that DC will go well they like this story more than this story I think we should give them this story but they're dead no because in convergence we left the doors open I think this is a marketing in a way, it's obviously to be used as, hey, we're moving from New York to, I think they were from New York to some other place. But it's also a way to say, what is better? Is the New 52 going to sell more than, uh, New 52 Convergence going to sell more than Pre? Or Zero Hour? Or Pre Crisis on Infinite Earth? Or Post Crisis on Infinite Earth? Are they going to sell more or less? And what sells more, they're probably going to be like, ha, let's go. We have ourselves a plan. These guys are going to get their pre Crisis Infinite Earths. These guys are going to get their post Crisis Infinite Earths. And these guys are going to get their Zero Hour. Post Zero Hour. And these guys are going to get the New 52. Or whatever they're going to call it now. Because apparently New 52 is going away. They've, they're getting rid of the New 52 sign. Which is cool. Although, to be honest, New 52 was gone a long time ago when you think about it. New 52 was never new. Like, technically, after a year of New 52, it wasn't exactly New 52 anymore. But yeah, this is what I have to say on the idea, and I'm gonna say, in if you love it, if you love all the universe they're gonna bring in for convergence, go and get go and pick up an issue. Um, maybe read one issue in the store, or wait until the end of it all, and you can get more ideas. But remember, when the storytelling in these sort of um stories, just because you have to fill in the gaps doesn't mean it's bad. But it depends on your preference. But also remember that you get a bigger picture when they're all together. So issue after you read issue one and issue two, issue three might not be out and you'd be like, where the hell is the story gonna go? And then you pick up issue three and you're like, okay, okay. So to me the best way to read convergence have the well, issue if if you've got the confidence in it, weekly. Each week get the ish, next issue. But if you want, the best way would be to wait until it's put into a graphic um a graphic novel and then pick it up for like 30, 40 bucks and be like, alright, sweet, convergence, mine. The only downside is I think the um, the tie-ins, I don't think they come together. I don't know, I, I, um, that's the one side I haven't gotten into with comics is you get the main story, but I've never gotten the side issues. The only one that I got side issues was Final Crisis, which had side issues from Superman and Batman. And then they had the, the main Final Crisis, and that was it. But that's because it came into the story, which may happen with Convergence, I don't know. But on that, I am out. Um, but yeah, if I just... I like Convergence, and I think a lot of people are giving it a lot of bad rep. But to me, you can't really give a full, detailed look on Convergence until it's over. Um, until you've got the whole thing in your hands, from issue 1 to issue well, issue 0 in this case, to issue 12 or, or issue 7 or 8, or wherever it's going to end, and then you've got the side issues. And then you take it all into one big bubble, and you go through it. And that's me out. Rock on, fellow Vikings.